What's up, mamas? I'm Rebecca. You're watching the Reseller Mom Show, and thank you for joining me today for something that I've never done before, a collaboration video. I um, did a Momversations with um, Quemby, the Grateful Queen, and a while ago, and then she reached out saying that she was going to do a collaboration video with a bunch of YouTube channels all about our personal story and our personal journey and our why of why we started reselling and I had always had the intention to share this story and it's not like it's this amazing story but I did have the intention of sharing it um, and I always kind of felt like who am I to share like this whole like my story when my channel wasn't very big yet so I kind of thought I would get a little bit bigger of a channel before I shared this but whatever it's fine like maybe you want to know maybe you don't maybe you have a similar story to me maybe you don't so I'm excited to be a part of a collaboration. So thank you, Quemby, the Grateful Queen, for setting this up. I do want to read off everyone that's in it. I am going to have everyone's channels linked below of who's involved. And so everyone on their channel is doing the same exact video, sharing their story. So go ahead and check everyone out. Subscribe to all of their channels. Um, I'm excited. There's a few on here that I actually didn't know about. And that's the funny thing with YouTube is that you can go along in your little algorithm curated universe and never find other YouTubers that you would really enjoy until you find out about them maybe on Instagram or in another way or perhaps one day finally <laughs> they're you know suggested to you and so I thought this is great so I'm gonna be reaching out you know and checking out all of these channels as well like I said some of them I knew some of them I didn't um, but let me go ahead and go over the list and then I'll jump into my story so the first one is The Grateful Queen. So she set this all up. Definitely check her out. Um, the next one is Sell Quick, Ship Quick. And the next one is Laura Von V. Uh, the next one is me, The Reseller Mom Show. And the next one is The Nashville Flippers. Next is Dizzy Angie and Posh Boss Blake. So thank you to everybody that's participating in this. I'm excited to be included. Thank you so much. Um, and let's jump into my story. I don't want to make it too long, but I do think that it is nice to get an idea of why people do this. And I've definitely questioned being a reseller or having a reselling business several times. This has been going on about three and a half years now. I started, um, in June of 2016. And so I'll give you, you know, kind of the backstory, but so it's been about three and a half years I'm doing this in December of 2019. And it's a nice time of reflection, the end of the year, setting up your goals for 2020. Why did you do this? What is working for you? Where do you want to go in the future, in the next year? Like there's just a lot of, this is a good time to be thinking about all of that. So grab your cup of coffee. <laughs> um, I did it in here. This is my guest room. I decided to do it in my guest room today instead of my reselling room because I thought this is more of like a, hey, let's just chat kind of video. So um, hopefully you like the new scenery. Hopefully the lighting's okay. I'm just using the window. So um, it's funny how things work out. So I'm like a work person. If you <laughs> figured that out if you've watched my channel by now or if you're new here um I hope you subscribe and welcome but I I'm a work person like I like to work I'm very ambitious I work a lot and before Gio before my son he's gonna be four this December um so he was born in December of 2015 pre-Gio like I worked and I was in event planning and hospitality sales um, I've had a number of different jobs throughout, but you know, just very career oriented and always wanting to work my way up, have good performance reviews, get bonus raises. Like I was just very highly motivated and a very much of a self starter. So when Gio was born, I was planning on going back to work and we had set up, you know, daycare facility and my husband sells new homes here in Orlando and I worked for the Convention and Visitors Bureau here in Orlando. So we were just, you know, ready to go on about the normal way that people go. You have your baby, you stay home with them for a little while if you're lucky to have a maternity leave, which I was, and then you go back to work. And that's what we had planned to do. 
And what I had read was that it would be a good idea to start your daycare process a week before you're supposed to go back to work. So that way you can iron out any kinks. Like, can you get there on time? What's the drop off process? Why does this say that my battery is gonna run low? Uh oh. Hold on, I think I have to actually turn on the light. Did that do it? Okay, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This is not my normal setup. Anyway, so we had like done a practice week before I was actually supposed to go back to work to drop Gio off. He was only a few months old. I don't even remember weeks, months, whatever. And I was okay with leaving him because I know that's what you do. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what everyone does. It was hard, but it wasn't like, ah, you know, like, I knew I had to go back to work. I was kind of, in a weird way, looking forward a little bit to going back to work, but also really scared. And the whole, like for me, the whole having Geo, <laughs> like I had a great pregnancy and everything, but the actual like delivery rocked my socks. Like I'm not a medical person. I don't do well with hospitals, blood needles anything medical people around you like that's not for me and so it was a long drawn out labor it was very scary <laughs> for me and i feel like somewhat traumatic and i don't know if it's like that for everyone or not but i'm never doing that again <laughs> so like i it was not good. I mean, everything was fine. Gio was healthy. I was healthy. Like everything was fine, but it was just a very, I didn't like it. And so I'm not going to be doing that again. No more babies for me. And so there was just a lot of like, from that delivery point to then being sleep deprived, deprived and pumping for breast milk and like all of these care things. Like I've just never really had to be responsible for another person in such a way like I'm a responsible person I do what I'm supposed to do but like as far as being needed and I'm the only way that he can get food I'm the only way that he gets care like I'm it that was hard for me that was really hard for me as what I thought was a very independent person that just does what I need to do and it was a really hard adjustment. And I think looking forward, going back to work was a way to say like, okay, I can just be me for a little bit. I can just be a person for a little bit and not be this mom to a baby, but I can be Rebecca again, the Rebecca that I was before. And lo and behold, you don't realize that before a baby, but you're never the Rebecca you <laughs> before ever again and so even four years old now that he's gonna be like I'm still not the same Rebecca I was before so it's an adjustment it was really hard for me I I don't know call me selfish call me self-centered call me whatever that's fine like the being a caretaker really was hard for me I love Gio with all of my heart and I tell him I love you with all my heart and all my guts like He's everything and I love him and I wouldn't undo any of this, but it's taken me a long time to get used to what does it mean to be somebody's mom in this way. And, and so kind of tying this all back because now I'm just kind of going all over the place. But um, this is why I don't do these stories because you can't leave it to me to actually tell you a succinct story. I'm here, there and everywhere. But we were going to leave him in daycare. We did the practice week and like so many snafus happened to where my husband and I were like, I don't know if this is just daycare <laughs> or if this is this daycare or if this is our unrealistic expectations about what daycare should be or is. But there was just a lot of nothing life threatening, like he's fine, but there was just a lot of things in a group care setting that we were not okay with. And again, if you're a person that doesn't have a choice, if you're a single mom, like I get that daycare is a very real thing for people. And 
like we were planning on doing it but we also are in a comfortable enough position to where we could change our minds and we did we decided that that daycare and really any daycare we came to the conclusion was not for us and what we wanted and and would sit well with us so we decided to look for a nanny and so like super crazy fast we started interviewing for a nanny we found someone we liked she was expensive but nice and we felt really good about it and like right before we like pulled the trigger to hire her i said like it like are we really gonna pay this lady this amount of money so that i can go over here and make that amount of money Plus, I mean, I, I made decent money. I made $65,000 a year, which I think is decent money. Obviously, I always want more, but, <laughs> you know, I was making okay money. My husband makes great money. So it wasn't a matter of, like, it was a total swap where it was, like, literally paying her to go somewhere. Like, it wasn't a total swap. I would have been coming out ahead. But we thought coming out ahead, even twenty or $30,000, a year while that's nothing to shake a stick at and we would be grateful for that money like is that worth the trade of now having this person at home with your baby you know daycare is one thing because now the baby's in daycare they're social there's this there's whatever and now you're going off to work and okay fine but now you have this person so it's basically like a mommy substitute that you're paying and you're only coming out ahead a little bit of money is that worth it to trade those years? So we decided, no, it wasn't. And so we said, okay, guess what? You're putting in your notice at work. And I did. And it was very exciting and I was super excited and I had every intention of being the perfect Pinterest mom. Like, I mean, I don't do anything kind of half, but you know what word I'm trying to say. Like, I don't do anything halfway. I jump in full whatever. So if I'm doing it, I'm doing it like, 150 million percent with like the making of the muffins and the having a house cleaning schedule and all of this stuff and so I did that like I I was sleep deprived taking care of the baby my mom was here we actually had house cleaners that was my push present from my husband to get house cleaners so I didn't have to worry about that for a while because he's super former military cleanliness guy picky guy and so we had that, like, we we had an army of everything happening. Like, it was great. And, but I was, like, a mess because being sleep deprived and getting used to being needed in this way and not knowing what to do with stuff and, like, it was so overwhelming and crazy that I was like, oh, my God, what did I do? Why am I not at work right now? Like, this is going to be my life. Then my mom left. You know, after she stayed about six months, she left. So it was just me and Gio. And it was like, is this all that there is? Like, is this what we do all day? Because, like, he doesn't even talk to me. <laughs> like, I'm alone with my thoughts and this baby and I'm not sleeping. And, like, I mean, after six months I was starting to sleep. But, like, it was still all so traumatic. And I, I promise, I promise I'm getting to reselling. But, like, I'm painting a picture here. So, <laughs> like... And again, you may have a completely different experience, you know, whatever. But like, I just, I didn't get depressed, but I was definitely in like a hazy funk of like, okay, I could keep doing Pinterest things, but guess what? I printed out a bunch of printables and he can't do those. <laughs> like, you know, I guess it was the baby stage that was really hard for me. I loved him. He was so cute. He was my little bug and I would put him in my little whatever wrap thing and like you know that was great but like as far as being stimulated in the day it was like whew, crickets like nothing's happening and I felt like I was slowly dying inside and like my brain cells were dying <laughs> and like wow I was learning new things and I was being stimulated in a new way to like do all this baby stuff and look up all these things or whatever like it just it what it wasn't hitting a, the right chord in me. It wasn't fulfilling me. I was missing something. And I don't know like how else to say it. And, and you're supposed to be like, oh, motherhood. And oh, I'm so grateful to be a stay-at-home mom. And then I'm so lucky. And, 
And yes, I am and I was and I'm grateful, but you can't deny when a piece of you inside is is lacking in some way or is missing or there's a void or what like you can't deny that when you're not a whole person you can't like my cup wasn't full therefore I couldn't run it over like I don't know all that stuff but like it was all messed up <laughs> so you know we were we were happy and everything was fine but it was not right and but I knew that we had made this decision and so there wasn't like there was nowhere to go. So, okay, fine. I found in a parenting magazine an ad or a little like when they recommend different things that you can do and go to this website or whatever. So it was like one of those compilation things and it was an app called Totspot. Shout out to all the Totspot moms. I know there's some of you still out there. So it was an app where you could sell your kids clothes. So think Poshmark, think Mercari, think Kitizen, think all of these things that we have now, which probably existed, you know, of course, that they existed. I just didn't know about them. But there's this top spot that's for just kids, just kids and kids clothes. And I'm like, bam, I can get rid of some of Gio's kids clothes. I'll put them on there. That'll be perfect. I'll put some money in his college fund. Like, that's great. Because he was at about six months old at that point. It was June of 2016. And so he was starting to grow out of things, of course. And I didn't know what to do with them. So that was great. So I took some pictures of some of his stuff. Even some things that were new with tags. Because he hadn't worn them or whatever. Because people got him like, you know, sweaters and things. But you don't always need that. And so I... Um, put some of his baby clothes on there and some of them sold. And that was so cool. And I was like, oh, and then I was like shipping it. And, you know, they said you should make it look cute. So I, you know, put wrapping, you know, not wrapping paper, like tissue paper. And it was all so cute and fun. And then as I got more into it, cause I'm like, oh, I could totally sell this. And then I could sell this and this would be good. I could put it in his college fund. Like I, I like making money. That may sound like a terrible thing, but I've always had little side things. I've always had little projects when I was little. I wanted to have a paper route. Then I wanted to shovel snow. Like I was always selling friendship bracelets. Like if you're a Gary V watcher, how he had all of his things looking back. I mean, I always kind of knew it that I wanted my own business and stuff, but like when you kind of actually think about it in perspective, like that's my story too. It's just in you. Either it's in you or it's not. Either you care about making money or you don't. Either you, you know, it's something that's just in you. It, it comes out. I don't know. So I was excited and intrigued by this money-making thing, not because I knew it was really a money-making thing, like a job, but I knew that I could make money for Geo's college fund by, by selling off some of his stuff, and I was intrigued by that. And so I, there were share groups and I got into the share groups to share your items. And I asked some people like, how do you, like how many kids do you have that you have like size eight, size 2T, size 18 months, boys, girls, like how, what's going on over there? And they were like, oh no, like <laughs> I thrift items and then I sell them. And I'm like, you do what? And they're like, I go to the Goodwill and I thrift, like I buy clothes from a thrift store. like. I guess I knew what a thrift store was before, but I don't know why in my sleep deprived baby taking care of state, I didn't know what they were talking about. So like at first I was just like, what is that? And then I kind of put two and two together and I'm like, they go to the thrift store, buy things and then sell them for a profit. What? So I packed up Geo, like little baby Geo. And we went to the Goodwill. I had to like look up, is there even a Goodwill here? Like I'd never been to it. And there's one, you know, like not, it's not close. I, there's one closer now, but then it wasn't close, but it wasn't far. It was kind of like 20 minutes. So I'm like, okay, like we got to figure out how to pack up this baby, make it there, not falling asleep in the car, but also being, you know, able to be in the whatever. It was like a whole thing. And I would buy items and like half price was 75 cents. Full price was $1.49 for like the really kiddo stuff. And then it was like a little bit more for the big kids. And so I'm buying stuff anywhere from like 75 cents a piece to like 349 at full price big kids. And so obviously some stuff you made a dollar, some stuff you didn't, some stuff you made five dollars, but the whole thing was really cool. And I started taking pictures and I bought 
you know, the poster board and I put it on the floor and I did it on my dining room table because that's where the best daylight was. Like, I don't want to say like old school, but like now having lights and a hanging thing and photo backdrop paper and like photo editing, like from where I am now to where I was then, um, like it's kind of interesting to think back of how actually simple it was. <laughs> how easy it was and how complicated I've made it <laughs> over the last couple of years. But, you know, it was cool and I could do it from home and I could take Geo and go out of the house and thrift some stuff. Even though I didn't really know I wasn't being super strategic, I was just baby gap. Okay. And, you know, I didn't, it took a long time before I even knew what Hannah Anderson was. Like, but I started paying more attention and then I found YouTube and I found Lindy Glenn's channel and I found Nicole State's channel and whatever, I'm not doing drama stuff. I learned everything I could. I fell into this world of thrifting items to sell for profit. And then I found out about Poshmark and I put one of my old work skirts that was a size two. Yes, this girl used to be a size two. She's never gonna be a size two again. Maybe someday, I can get my happy butt into a six. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping someday. Six, six. Um, but anyway, so it was a White House black market, just like black and white print skirt, stripes or chevron print or whatever. And um, I had put it on there, put a couple things on there. Nothing happened for a while. I don't even think I knew about sharing at that point on Poshmark. And so, but it, then one day it sold for $17 and I remember the title was like I put this on my Instagram a while ago like what was the first thing I sold and it was like EUC excellent use I was like what does EUC even stand for <laughs> oh my god EUC excellent use condition white WHBM white house black market was the title I don't even think I wrote skirt and it sold for $17 so on Poshmark after the 20% you made like $14 or $16 or something and or no 14 or 15 and so I was like like I could do like literally I did front pick back pick and maybe the tag I don't even remember what pictures I took but it was super easy flat lay and I was like that I made $14 Meanwhile, over here, I'm taking pictures of like 15 kids items just to make $14, but I thought that was great. I mean, I thought making $2 profit was the coolest thing and the most amazing thing. So the fact that then I saw, okay, you could do literally the same work and make $14 profit, I was like, what? Especially because that was mine, so there was no output. And that kind of got me into women's clothes so then I explored Poshmark more then Poshmark bought out Tot Spa and so everything transferred over so there was no more Tot Spa anymore then it was just Poshmark then uh I started getting into Kittizen which I know I keep saying I'm gonna do more Kittizen content and I will I just need to go there again um but Kittizen was great for a while and it's still there um and then I guess I found out about eBay because I joined forces with my sister because in the meantime I told her, you know, you could um, do this. You could totally do this. So then I got her into Poshmark and then we joined forces and we were doing it together actually for a while. And so then we brought on eBay and so we were doing Poshmark and eBay. Then we decided to part ways due to creative differences. We're still family, it's all good, but we're just different people. <laughs> so now she does her separate Poshmark, I do my separate business. At that time I started taking on virtual assistants and photographers and I knew that I wanted to do more, but Gio was still really little. He was only one and a half, two years old at that time. And it was still really hard for me to take pictures and get out to thrift and all this stuff. So. I, you know, had people help me. And then, um, you know, I was slowly making more and more money. I mean, what started out as 50 bucks, 200 bucks, 500 bucks, 800 bucks ended up to where I was making about $1,800 a month when it was still just me, maybe for a little bit when it was me and my sister before I started hiring people. And so once I started hiring people, it turned into a different thing and that's a topic for another video. Now I'm kind of slowly backing off 
because now I have more time. Gio's older, he goes to school part-time. Next year, he's gonna go to school kind of full half days, full week, half days. So I'll have even more time. So I'm slowly starting to take things back in house. So it's been an interesting journey. I've kind of run the gamut of things. Um, I've got a lot of changes that I'm making for next year. But I tell you all of this because I'm the kind of person that wanted to take reselling from being a reseller to making a reselling business. Because I can't do something part way. <laughs> I just can't. I have to like, it has to be the whole enchilada. So like, sorry, my throat is kind of scratching. So this video is getting long. I need to stop talking. And I don't even think I got to my why yet. Oh my God, I suck. So, <laughs> so really the end goal is that I can do this in the current situation. Like making the choice for your family to be a stay at home mom was hard for me and it was hard to deal with. And I lacked fulfillment in a certain part of myself. Not that I wasn't fulfilled as a mom because I love Gio. I love all the stuff that we're doing together. I love that I know him better than anyone else. I love that I know what's going on with him most of the day. You know, obviously he does go to a little part-time school now that he's older. But like, I know what's going on with him. I, he's not a stranger to me, <laughs> you know, like and I'm watching him grow up and he has me. And that's very important to me. It's important to my husband. My mom's super happy that I get to have this time with him because she didn't have that time, you know, with my sister and I, she had to work. And so whatever your situation is, it's fine. It's your family, it's your business, it's your kid. You do what you have to do. For me, staying at home was the right decision for our family but only being a stay at home mom was not the right decision for me. And so I've kind of worked myself around and now I'm in a place where I see that being a work from home mom for myself, so a mom boss, I have my own business. I'm not working from home for someone else. So working for yourself and working at home, that's the right thing for us. That's the right thing for me to feel fulfilled and have something besides my domestic duties that if you've watched my channel, you know, I'm not a big fan of my domestic <laughs> duties. Like laundry, I don't mind so much. It's really more the cooking that I have an issue with. <laughs> so the second I make a ton of money where I can hire a kitchen manager, that's what I'm doing. Um, but like I, you know, can keep up with the house. We do ha still have the cleaners. We haven't gotten rid of them because my husband fell way too much in love with having cleaners because <laughs> they do a way better job than I ever would. Um, so we still have the cleaners. But, you know, I keep up with the house. I manage all the correspondence like gifts and, you know, birthday cards and all the geo activities. And, you know, we do a lot of enrichment at home. And I generally feel like I do a good job for my husband. I mean, he's kind of like... <laughs> low man on the totem pole but me me working me would be a very bad thing for our for our family working out of the house me would be very bad because in hospitality you have client meetings you have weekend things you have a boss that you have to do whatever they say you have certain time off like there's just so much less stress and less coordination by me being the home front and live going and doing his thing my husband because I can fit reselling in however I want. I mean, yes, there are times where I feel a little trapped by not being able to go to a clearance sale because I have geo or something like that. You know, like that happens and I get kind of bummed about those sorts of things, but that will ease up with time. So, you know, I'm getting okay with that. But for me, being able to be fulfilled as a person, as a woman, as a a person that has entrepreneurial tendencies that wants to call her own shots that has a problem with authority and thinks that she can do it her way <laughs> that's better um you know i'm a lot happier even though sometimes i'm more stressed out having my own business i'm a lot happier because it's my stress it's not someone else telling me or causing me that stress so i'm fulfilled by having this business it fulfills something that just being a stay-at-home mom did not for me. 
at the same time, having this business allows me to have the flexibility to put my family first. And I can't say that I put my family first every minute of the day. Sometimes I put the business first when I'm taking pictures, when I'm recording a YouTube video or whatever. But in general, in the framework, I can put my family first because I can work when Gio's at school. When Gio comes home, we're gonna play Star Wars for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> Like, you know, we're going to do his activity sheets and his, we're working on his letters and I can teach him things with my reselling business and enrich him. I can show him what it means to buy things, sell things, to have your own business. Like, I feel like having this reselling business has enriched all of our lives. Maybe not so much my husband. <laughs> Probably it's been worse for him than anybody else, but you know, it's made me realize that I can learn new skills, all this YouTube, all this social media stuff, all this buying and selling and negotiating, like that's all new for me, um, that I can run my own business and rely on myself. I mean, I have an operation now, and again, it's not major, but like at one point I had six VAs working for me and two local people working for me. And I've tried all different kinds of stuff and I have a storage unit that I'm, you know, have thousands of items stored at on a regular basis. And I started from nothing, like it was nothing. And now I'm regularly meeting quote payroll where I'm paying, you know, it's not payroll because they're not my employees, but you know, I'm, I'm responsible for other people's income. I'm responsible for my income. I'm an employer, so to speak. Um, you know, mom more boutique didn't exist before. Um, it may morph into something else. I, it was probably a half sleep deprived stupor that I gave it that name. I have no idea where that, and again, I started on Tot Spot, so it was mom, kids, all of that. So it wasn't this other thing then. So I may go through a rebranding at some point, but like, I look at my life now, it's been four years, Joe's gonna be four, and it's like, I couldn't see it happening any other way. Like, I don't know what my life would be like if I didn't have this business and I still stayed home with him. Would I be a better muffin maker? <laughs> like, would my house be more organized and cleaner? Would we be less stressed? Would I be happier? I don't know, like, I don't think so because those things aren't things that fulfill me. I don't want to be a better muffin maker. Like there are some people that all they have a burning desire in life is to make the best muffin. And I don't, I don't want to make muffins. I've said this before, like, I don't know why I say muffins, but like, or casserole or whatever. Like I don't have that in me. I don't have, I'm not compelled to have the best muffin making capabilities. I don't. However, I do, I am, can only breathe <laughs> like when I am thinking about my business. My default thoughts are not of your running to-do list for the house, like a lot of moms. What I need to do for Geo's party. I mean, yes, I have a list for that and I'm very organized, but like, it's what do I do for the business? How can I make the business? Like the business is everything that I think about. That's what I'm supposed to do. That's what drives me. And reselling, I don't know that, I don't know that I am compelled to be a reseller per se. I've said it on a live before, like I don't love reselling. I love that reselling is my business and I love business and I love having my own business and creating my own business and making systems for my business and seeing what works and making money from my business. So maybe reselling won't be my business in the future. I've talked before about my multiple income streams and my print on demand and YouTube and creating for YouTube and that's, I love that way more <laughs> than I love reselling itself. But it's a means to an end to have this life, to have this ability to contribute to my family, to make money, to feel fulfilled, and to be there for Gio in a way that my mom didn't have the opportunity to be there for me, 
in a way that a lot of moms don't have the opportunity to be there for their kids. And I take it very seriously. And I'm like, especially now that Gio's older, I feel like it, when he was a baby, he was just there. And so, yes, I talked a lot and we did all the proper tummy time, <laughs> you know, all of that stuff. But like now is when in this three to five range of age, like this is still a developmental time where like I can set him up with tools that will last him for the rest of his life. Now, it's an important time for him to see things from me and for me to give him things. And I'm happy that I'm home to do that and it's not someone else. And I have no judgment for someone who is in a situation where someone else has to do that for their kid. Like, I get that. It's fine. That was going to be us, but it, things changed. And so it's completely okay if that's not your situation. But I do think that for people that are in reselling, for people that are moms in reselling, that maybe work outside the home and resell and have a family, it is possible for you to not have that life if that's not the life that you want anymore. If you want to be a stay-at-home mom and contribute to your family and make money in reselling, it is possible. I'm not saying anyone can do it. I'm not saying it, anyone should do it, but it is possible for you to work yourself into a way where you can make it your reality. You know, I'm not going to go into what you need to do to become full-time or all of that. It's so different for everyone. So many people make those videos. That's not what I'm going to do. But I do think that Telling my story and saying how daycare wasn't right for us and that we tried a nanny and then we decided to stay home but it wasn't fulfilling for me and now I've turned it into this thing that maybe was my destiny all along and it just kind of took this roundabout way to get here um, is maybe a thought for someone who would like that situation for themselves or maybe didn't even know that they wanted that situation for themselves and now they have, you know, the idea in their head. So... I've rambled a lot through this video. I'm so sorry for the people that collaborated with me that made like a nice, succinct 10 minute video. I'm on 37 minutes. That's how it works here at the Reseller Mom Show. I'm sorry. That's why I do um, like tips videos that are more like I can shoot them in clips and keep myself like on track because when you just leave it to me to chat, I'll talk to him. I'm literally looking at myself in my laptop in my guest room, like just blibber blabbering. I could do this all day. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but now I have to go take pictures. So I, my why is flexibility and fulfillment. I have flexibility to support my family in a meaningful way. And I have fulfillment for myself. Reselling has given me that. And I look forward to 2020, the year ahead, where I can even make it more exciting, more impactful for us. And I look forward to sharing that with all of you on this channel. So if you haven't subscribed, if you're new here, welcome. This channel is all about reseller mom content to get more done, make more money, and stay sane while raising kids and reselling online. Um, so please subscribe and like this video on the way out. And then go ahead, if you've made it to the end, please go and check out all the other people that are in this collaboration. Sign up to their YouTube channel, subscribe, like their videos, watch their videos, and give everyone a little bit of reseller love. Thank you so much. I will see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>